If I could sum anything up for, for this podcast, it's just that January showed some, I'll be honest, January showed some scary uh, statistics. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Closing with Corey podcast. I want to start off by saying, again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I do want to acknowledge that one of the most important things to me when I was starting this podcast was the consistency and the persistence each and every week. I know that it's been two weeks since my last podcast, and regardless of what's been going on in, in my life, my personal life, all these things, I want to make it to where I can always find an excuse. Um, it was just me kind of just checking in to say, you know what, I made this commitment. I, I, I wanna make sure that regardless if it's gonna be a five minute check-in or a 15 minute or a just close with Corey segment or whatever the case is, that I do stay persistent. So I'm holding myself accountable for that. Um, these last couple of weeks have been crazy though, between me having to literally buy a new car within 72 hours and, and hoping that my car didn't blow up to uh, my heat not working um, during the coldest couple of days of the winter with a 11-month-old baby. All these things, life happens, and life gets crazy sometimes. But again, I need to find that time within that to stay persistent and to stay committed to these types of things. And these are just just a, a, a small section of what I need to stay committed to doing persistently just to be able to make sure that it, it will have a long-term benefit and a long-term goal to achieve too. Um, that's kind of my little check-in with myself. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, as you can see, wearing red today for Valentine's Day. I know Valentine's Day is tomorrow because this is going to be coming out on Monday the 13th. Um, I wanted to keep it a little bit light with this one, and I wanted to go over a little bit of what I've been personally doing in my own time because... Uh, I've had some downtime. Uh, the market has been slow. And if there was one word that I was trying to get to describe the current state of the market um, is intimidating. And the reason why I say that is because there, there comes a time frame in real estate, and um, I don't want to speak for all realtors, but a lot of people that I have talked to in this business feel the same way about a, a certain uh, time frame between right around Thanksgiving, mid-November to end November, uh, just about to, I want to say, the end-ish of January is the time in real estate to where sometimes you forget that you have a job because there's not a lot that's going on, obviously, during the holiday season and, and, the, and the new year. And, and all these things are happening to where not a lot of people are primarily focused on real estate. Um, me, as an anxious person that I already am, I already feel that be become amplified by the fact that my phone isn't ringing off of the hook. So instead of having that downtime and being able to enjoy a little bit of peace and quiet, I kind of look at it the exact opposite to where my uh, peace is normally from being busy and, and staying busy and having conversations with people and all of these things. And I also thought about it too, to where I want to be very realistic when I'm talking about the market on this podcast, just because I don't want it to translate to a conversation that I'm going to have with a buyer or a seller. And they call me and say, Hey, you know, I know that you said that the market is doing absolutely phenomenal. I'm, I'm ready to start looking um, or I'm ready to start selling. And then the next thing you know, I have to go through and kind of backtrack on like, oh, well, hold on a second, slow down. You know, it's not exactly the best that it's ever been right now. And then kind of go through that. So I'm like, let me be very authentic with this. And my hopes is going to be that the market is flourishing and, and it's booming and it's just absolutely amazing. But the reality of it is, is that it currently is a little bit intimidating and it's intimidating to newer agents that just got in when things were absolutely crazy from last year and the year before and now dealing it, dealing with the market this year, it's, it's, it's tough to say, oh, wait a second, like this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought this was all going to be just very seamless and it was always going to be a a, a, a little bit of an influx, but there's going to be inventory and people reaching out and wanting to buy and rates are going to be good and all these things that the reality of it is, is you can't predict all of those aspects of real estate. What I've done is I, I've done a little bit of, of, of uh, geo farming, basically, which is realistically just a term used to be able to focus on certain areas within um, the marketplace that you kind of want to work within. So for me, Somerset County, Hunterdon County, Bucks County, as I've explained before, are the locations that I work in. And I really, 
I, I know that a lot of real estate is sold each year within those counties, but I didn't really realize how much real estate was sold until I started going through each one of these townships and boroughs one by one to be able to see what kind of activity was actually there. And, you know, funny enough, um, Benny uh, or Kevin, Kevin Yento, um, the, the team leader, is is someone who I kind of look to to be able to get an idea on when he first started in real estate, why why choosing Bridgewater as a primary area that you wanted to specialize in? And then once I looked into the data, I realized, okay, and I got some of the stuff here that, that I've, I, I've been looking into. Um, just this past year, 529 homes sold in Bridgewater. The average sales price was around 550,000. Currently, there's 40 pending homes and 50 active homes. So what that shows me, and, and when I went into 2021 and 2020 and 2019, 2018, I saw that that number was on a steady incline. So the turnover for real estate, so basically the amount of business that is, is produced in Bridgewater Township was staying, not whether it was consistent and steady or if it was on an increase, meaning that more and more homes were being sold and bought within that area. So it, it makes total sense on why you would want to specialize within that area. So that's been one thing that I've kind of done behind the scenes. And I went into Bridgewater, I went into Branchburg, Raritan, Somerville, Hillsboro, um, um, Raritan Township in Hunterdon County, Red uh, Reddington Township in Hunterdon County, and then like the Richboro, Newtown, Yardley area within Bucks County too, just to be able to get a sense. And what I saw throughout all of those counties was a very, very similar situation. Um, and I'll go over it a little bit. So instead of going through each area or, or choosing the counties as a whole, I wanted to, to, to zero in on, I focused on Branchburg Township in Somerset County and Raritan Township in Hunterdon County. Um, and, and here's kind of what I found. So in Branchburg Township, currently, there's 14 homes that are active. And now I understand that to the average person that's like, oh, okay, that, that seems like a lot of homes, you know, 14 homes. But if you're going into the amount of homes that have sold in 2022 for Branchburg Township, it's 231. So starting it off, if you break that down to 12 months, it, it's on the, the lighter end when it comes down to the amount of homes that should be on the market and also should be pending because pending homes right now for Branchburg Township is only 11. And from January 1 to February, what are we? February 8th is today. So from January 1 to February um, 7th, there was only 11 closed homes in Branchburg Township. So right off the bat, you're seeing that, and obviously you're going to have more real estate being sold in you know that March to, let's say, October timeframe. For Raritan Township, I'm going to kind of go through this quickly because the, the bigger story is not just about this data and what's been going on this, this past month, but then I'll get into why I'm kind of talking about this. In Raritan Township in Hunterdon County, right now there are 12 active homes on the market, 20 pending homes. And then from January 1 to February 7th, there was 27 closed units. And then in 2022, there was 35 closed units. And in 2021, there was 23 closed units. So this same pattern was consistent throughout all the townships, all the boroughs in Somerset County, Hunterdon County, Bucks County. I can't really speak for any place else in Pennsylvania or New Jersey because they only focused on those areas. What I saw and the consistency that I saw was that 100% from last year, the numbers were down as far as closed units between uh, just in the January month alone. The year before that in 2021 is also down from 2022. So it kind of went on this slope like this and it's to where 2022 seems to be, um, and we're only in January right now, but seems to be the peak of that slope. And now we're seeing it kind of come down to a more realistic standpoint. And what a what, what causes that slope to kind of come back down that way? Obviously, rates are going to be one thing because that's going to be the leverage on the buying side and the motivation on the buying side and the affordability on the buying side. And then in general, inventory has been low for going on two years now. We've had a few listings on the team over the last couple of weeks to wear the same thing, 40, 50, 60 people in an open house five, six, seven to 15, 16, 17 offers on properties. So it's still there. What does it mean for both buyers and sellers? Kind of similar from whatever the podcast was ago that we talked about a little, a little bit. 
buyers are getting a little bit of buying um, buying leverage back in in the terms of of a real estate transaction in the means to where maybe there's some some room to negotiate a a deal with the seller now that's not to to set this unrealistic expectation that if a home just got listed in a very desired area at a very aggressive market price that you're going to be able to go in there and say hey let's offer fifty thousand dollars less than what the the listing price is because that's not going to work out nor would it ever work out in regardless of whatever market it's going to be a lot of that time that a buying leverage comes into play is when a home has been sitting for let's say about two to two and a half weeks that that day one to that two to two and a half week time frame is on the selling side, a crucial and critical time to be able to sell that property because in that time frame is when you're getting the most qualified buyer, you're getting the the best price, you're getting hopefully some of the the most um, um, the, the the best terms for your buyer. I'm, I'm sorry for your seller. So that time frame is so so critical when it comes down to um, a, a new a brand new listing. So then, what does that exactly mean on the selling side? I think now more than ever, it is so crucial to be able to work with somebody who is going to be very upfront and honest with you with the temperature of the market. So if you got somebody coming in there to say, hey, listen, we can just list it at whatever price you think it's going to be able to be listed at. We're going to be able to have a ton of people. We'll we'll get a a whole bunch of offers and, and we'll be perfectly fine. That may not necessarily be the exact situation anymore. I think that for anybody and and on the buying side as well too you know buying is obviously very very important um i'm looking at it for a seller who is more so in the position to where they are okay put it this way so on the selling side you know they're at a higher risk to be able to not get the the best possible offer for their home if it is not listed properly from the beginning so if it's not listed properly, if it's overpriced, whatever the the, the, the the situation is, that means that that home is going to sit longer on the market, which means that it's going to be less likely to get top dollar if it's, if it's on for more than two and a half weeks. That's what the numbers are going to say. That's not necessarily across the board what happens every single time, but that's where that possibility lies. So on the selling side, I'm not saying that it's more important than the buying side. I'm just saying that they are more at risk of not getting the best turnaround and the best uh, amount of money for their home if that conversation with their selling agent is not, hey, listen, I need to be very honest with you. I need to let you know exactly what the market value of your home currently is, not what it's projected to be, not what it was in 2021 going into 2022. Right now, February 2023, here is what is happening within the market. Here is what homes similar to yours are being listed for and closing for within the last six months. Here are the homes that are still on the market because they are either listed a little bit higher than where they should be, or realistically, there's just not enough buyers within that range right now that are looking. There's a lot of different factors that go into it, but you need someone who is going to explain every single option and and every single single factor that will ultimately go into what you should list your home at on the buying side it's going to be the same thing it's going to be you need to trust your 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 agent if they are saying hey listen We need to make an aggressive offer on this home because they are having multiple showings or they're having multiple bids. They call the highest and best. And it's not to where it's like, oh, well, wait a minute, you know, the market changed. So we're still going to, you know, we're going to try and and knock a little bit off of, of the, the, the asking price, which again, if it's, if it's a, if it's a financial budget thing, that's a different conversation. If it's the, the actual fact of we're just trying to get a great deal, we're really not in that market either to where we're, we're hoping just to be able to to offer 50 grand less than what it's listed for and to be able to, to lock a home in place. It's intimidating. It's intimidating for both sides because it needs to be very calculated, needs to be very strategic on, on what a buyer is going to do and what a seller is going to do in order for both of them to be able to have somewhat of, of a good experience in a real estate transaction. So it's to be able to showcase that we are hopeful that things will be able to not have too much of a dip down from that slope that we talked about a little bit earlier on, um, and also be able to showcase that obviously January is always a slow month uh, in real estate in 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 across the board and and going back from 
even when I started in 2016, um, you know, January comes around and it's kind of like, okay, where is everybody? Where are all my sellers at? You know, where are my buyers at? But right now I do have a lot of homes that are um, kind of in that preparation mode to where they're going to be ready to be listed, let's say by March or April. I have a lot of buyers that have, you know, some have been, um, I don't want to say left over from 2022, but, you know, have been working with me from last year and they, they still haven't found a place. So now we're kind of going strong this year around this time. Also, a lot of buyers as well, too, probably over the last maybe I would say two to three weeks um, that have just reached out about wanting to get pre-approved and wanting to get that whole process started. So if anyone has any questions, if anyone wants a, a, a CMA of their home or just to get an idea as far as what their current market value is, uh, reach out to me. Let me know. I will I will gladly do that for you. And then on the buying side as well, too, especially in that Somerset County, Hunterdon County, Bucks County area with those places that I talked about. I have, I have a ton of information over these last two weeks that I was able to compile to give you a better idea as far as what's going on with those homes that are listed right now, kind of where they're at, the average uh, sales price, um, just being able to really look into that data and dive into that data a little bit. Because you know, real estate's not all about data. There, there's there's a, a an emotional factor that comes into it for someone buying a home that they're going to be living in, just like someone selling a home that they've lived in for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever the case is. But a lot of it also comes down into data as well, too, to try to predict things as, as, as best as you possibly can. So that's really the, the, the uh, information that I wanted to go over today. I appreciate everybody. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe on all platforms. Check this out. I will be more consistent. I'm going to be doing one next week. Next week, I'll probably do another Just Close with Corey. We'll do a couple of other check-ins too to see kind of what's going on with the market. Um, I have something planned for episode number 10 that I will get into a little bit later on. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say it on eight or nine, depending on once I lock everything into place. Uh, but a lot of exciting things. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I appreciate everybody reaching out. Any questions at all, feel free to reach out and I will see you guys next week. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great week. Thank you.